Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop. In one of my previous videos, actually it was quite a long time ago, a few months ago, um, one or two people asked how I go about manufacturing the PDVS2 Minis. So I thought I'd put together a little video here of uh, how I actually go about this. And the reason I'm publishing this today is because I made quite a revelation in terms of the testing process, I've managed to speed it up quite significantly and uh, I thought I'd uh, let everyone have a look at that and see what that's all about. So what you're looking at at the moment is a batch of PDVS2s that are undergoing soak test. This is the, the latest batch that's just waiting to go on sale but uh, I like to soak test these for at least four days uh, if I can, a week. Um, before I actually do the final calibration. So this lot here are working, they've been tested, they've gone through the testing process, they've been pre-calibrated and as you see I've got these green PCB strips going across the uh, PDVS2 Mini. So what's that all about? Well actually prior to that I was using a board, if I just swing around to have a look at that now you can see this board that I'd sort of put together there with a load of tails coming out of it. That's where I would uh, lay the PDVS2 minis down on top of and just plug them in and they're obviously commoned up to a, a single power supply. So the problem with the board I just showed you was the fact that it's quite big, there's tails all over the place and it just takes up far too much room. So I came across the idea of using a, a PCB strip like this. It's just two single tracks running the length of it for the uh, DC power and it's a 3mm PCB so it's quite rigid and I've just got a single tail coming off the end as you see here and that goes away off the power supply and it means I can much more densely patch them together here for testing it takes up very little space on the workbench and it means I can test or at least 21 of them as you see here or if I get this one's assembled eventually I'll be able to do more in one go. So the PDVS2s are sitting there under soak test and once they're finished with the soak test I'll take them over for calibration. I'll do the final calibration on the PC which is what I'll show you in a minute. That's where the revelation comes in. And after all that's done I'll fit the acrylic covers that you see here, screw them down and that's basically it. Now of course when you're testing things never go to plan and I've got a faulty one here that I've actually I've just repaired it. Um, this one powered up perfectly, seemed to go through all the pre-calibration okay and it would just switch off randomly and sometimes it'll last an hour, sometimes it'll last 15 seconds and it took quite a bit of time to fix this one. I was all over the place because uh, I mean the processor can shut down the board, um, there, you've got a power switch, you've got a power circuit, you've got quite a lot there that can go wrong, you know, any one of those things can cause it to, to go wrong and shut off and in the end actually this one turned out to be a, the shocky diode in the power circuit. It was leaking a little bit, it was back feeding onto the FETs that, uh, for the shutdown circuit in the board and every now and then that voltage would just stray a little bit too high and it uh, would shut down the PDVS2 Mini so it took quite a bit of time to fix that one but uh, you know it's working now, this has been running just like this uh, off a of DC power for the past uh, oh, two days and it's without a problem so that's uh, already to join its uh, brothers over on the seat soap workbench. There is actually a couple other pieces of test kit I use for testing the PDVS2 mini circuit boards. Because they've got the main board, you've also got a charger board here. I need to test those both individually, especially the charger board because the 3.3 volt regulators on there. There's also some regulators on the main board, but I test this smaller board uh, on a piece of test kit here. It actually plugs into this two sockets here and I've kind of got various tails for connecting to the batteries, um, for connecting to an ammeter, for uh, measuring the charge current uh, and that sort of thing. And this really helps get things properly in place for when I actually uh, plug in the charge board onto the main board, I, I know it's working. So I've also got another piece of test equipment here that I made and uh, the problem with this is 
in order to calibrate the charge current from the batteries, I need to disconnect one side of the battery of one of the batteries and put an ammeter in series with that. Now this particular type of PP3 uh, battery sockets is not really built for doing that. Um, so what I've managed to do is I've built this. The batteries go on here and then I remove the batteries from here obviously and then these two tails here just basically go across the two outside terminals there and then I can put a ammeter across this two here and a voltmeter on here it means that when I'm doing lots of boards it's very easy just to disconnect this here bring in the next one attach it on just like that I'm not unplugging and plugging in batteries all the time all I'm ever moving is these two tails so when you're in production and you're making lots of something a lot of time is spent getting everything in place for testing and calibration that sort of thing it's easy to design something but if it's impossible or um, it takes a long time to set up to do this to do that your production time just goes way down so any way of speeding it up is uh, you know and simplifying it is ideal so here's the first one of this actual batch where it's actually fully assembled that you can see here it's got its perspex cover on all screwed in nicely and it's uh, ready to undergo the final calibration and this is where the revelation comes in so the problem with calibration is I'm using a multi set point technique i.e. the DAC is controlled not from 0 to 10 volts with a uh, Y equals MX plus C, i.e. two set points, minimum and maximum. I'm actually using multiple set points, one volt apart from 0 volts all the way up to 10 volts. And what that does is it helps with the uh, linearity of the calibration I and L, and to be more precise. And the problem with that is you've effectively got set points all the way from 0 all the way up to 10. And therefore you can be sitting all day, well not all day, but you can be sitting for, you know, quite a while calibrating zero volts, then going on to calibrate one volt, then two volts, then three volts on my 3458A multimeter. And when you've got a batch of, you know, 50 PDVS2 minis to do, it takes a long time to go through that process. And I often wondered if there was any way I could automate that. Now the PDVS2 Mini does have a serial interface uh, that connects to the PC and I've got a VB app that I've written that I supply with the PDVS2 Minis in order to remote control the PDVS2 Mini, i.e. you can control the output voltage here. And I thought, well, so that means I've got control of the PDVS2 Mini from the PC. What I need is control of the multimeter from the PC as well and I can form a control loop i.e. the software will tell the PDVS2 Mini to go to say 5 volts the multimeter will obviously read that through its, from the analog output here into the analog input of the multimeter and then it will feed what voltage it's reading back to the PC and then the PC can then instruct the calibration set points of the PDVS2 Mini to change until exactly 5.000000 5 volts is on the display, a full calibration circuit. And once it's achieved that, it'll move on to the next voltage and so on until all 11 set points are calibrated. And then, in fact, the software can then instruct the PDVS2 Mini to save that calibration and therefore there's virtually no interaction via the push buttons here to do any of the calibration. So of course that involves a PC like I said and an app that I've written in VB. So let's take a look at that now. So there's the PDVS2 Mini connected up to my multimeter and also the USB serial interface connected up as you can see it lights flashing there so it's running away and obviously I've got the uh, 3458A there with the PDVS2 Mini connected and then there's a GPIB um, cable at the back of the 3458A that goes away up to there where I've got my E5810A that's basically a LAN uh, interface for GPIB and then obviously that's uh, then an Ethernet cable RG45 into the PC.
Okay, I've just got the camera pointed at my PC screen, so I hope you can see this. This is the program here. Uh, this section here is all to do with GPIB, and this section over at the right hand side is the PDVS2 Mini side of things, the serial USB interface. So this was a standalone program before, and this part here was a standalone program before. So I took the VB, put it all together, and created this one single app. So I've got one device connected, that's the 3458A, that's it connected there. You can actually see it's actually taking readings at the moment. I've got it up and running uh, via GPIB address 22. I've got it set for uh, taking a sample from 3458A every 0.4 of a second, uh, which is a kind of value there that uh, seems to work best for me. Uh, so that's running at the moment. It's getting data from the 3458A. And then over at the right hand side, I haven't started this yet, the comms is connected and the idea is that I start off this app at this right hand side here and run the calibration. So the first thing I would do is send uh, pre-cal values to the PDVS2 Mini. Well, what's that all about? Well, if there's virtually no calibration data at all in the PDVS2 Mini, then the way this will work would be quite slow. It would take forever to, to step up or step down to the final value. So what I'm able to do is preload the PDVS2 Mini with numbers that I've gotten historically from previous calibration, previous manual calibration that I've done over the past couple of years. So I'll load those as default values in first. And then when I run the auto calibration, that's the starting point. And then what will happen is, uh, based on the value, for instance, DAC 0 volts here, that's the first set point, uh, a value will be loaded in there, and then the program will either uh, step up or step down, depending on which direction it detects it needs to go in, in order to, uh, to achieve 0 volts from the 3458 a, because this is what the program will set out first is the zero volts here. And then once zero volts is done, the program will then instruct the PDVS2 Mini to output one volt, and then the program will be looking for exactly one volt from the 3458A, again stepping up or stepping down until it achieves that value. There's other things like a comms delay and a step size, that sort of thing there, because in actual fact, the, when you run the auto calibration, it actually does a, a first sweep uh, of the first two set points there and then from the difference between those two, it can then go and guess the calibration of the rest. So by doing that, you get even closer nominal values before it actually starts the final calibration. And the reason I do that is because the final calibration is done one bit at a time. Uh, whereas the initial calibration of the first two set points is done five bits at a time, so it can get there relatively quickly. Plus, uh, when it's running in the pre-calibration, it's just looking for an accuracy within 0 0.0001, and obviously when it's doing the final calibration, I want that to 10 microvolts rather than 100. It sounds a little bit complicated, so I hope you're still with me. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the program here, I'm going to set the pre-cal values and then once that's done I'll run the auto-cal and you'll see it running. You won't really see much in the left hand side, you'll see the login window data start to appear there because that's just the communication and the readings it's getting back from the 3458A and you might see some other things there but really you just ignore that side, the GPIB is set up and we're really just running this section here. So the first thing I'll do is send the pre-cal values to the PDVS2 Mini by hitting that button there. And there it is, it's sending all that data in. That's it done there. So there's the values in the PDVS2 Mini. That's the ones that were sent. Now I can run the AutoCal and it'll start doing the uh, first pass, which is this work out the calibration for the first two set points. And then it'll guess the rest or calculate the rest. So there we go. Initial calibrating zero volts. You can see it counting down to zero. It's done that. It's a way off to do one volt now. So you can see the DMM is slowly increasing 
because this is the bit value on that one volt and you can see it's going up five bits at a time until it gets to approximately the right value of one volt. So we'll just let that run. So you can see I guessed 3000 and my nominal value was 3000 for the zero volts. So it didn't need to go down much. It looks like my one volt one's a little bit further out. It's going to be about a thousand counts or something like that above my nominal value of 100,000. There are different ways of doing this, but this is just the first way I managed to get it up and running, so I've kind of just left it at that. The comms delay of 125 milliseconds within the program at certain points in this, the program, I don't really want to bombard the PDVS too many with comms packets one after another because it can't handle it. The buffer inside the PDV is too many. It's just what's built into the AT Mega chip and it ain't that great. So uh, I've got specific parts of the program, a comms delay 125 and I've made that adjustable um, just till I find my feet and find out what value works best. So here we are, we're approaching a final value of one volt. There it is and now we're in the final calibrating the zero volts again. So it's gone back to zero volts and now run this right hand side one bit at a time for a final accuracy of 10 microvolts. And you can see we're already at three volts because that pass was able to cut, that last pass was able to calculate the numbers and they're not that far out. So it's now onto four volts. So it doesn't take very long after you've done the first zero and one volt. And like I said, we're looking for a one bit accuracy on there. And what I'll typically do when this is done, uh, like I said, I'll save the value to EEPROM within the PDVS too many, but I'll also adjust it by hand to get it the final accuracy of the calibration of the of the PDVS too many. This just gets me 99.9% .9 of the way there. So we're at 9 volts now, pretty close. Now this calibration, these are big numbers because it's a 20 bit DAC so it's got you know over a million um, bits Hence the big numbers at the bottom, 994,000. We're on the 10 volt one now, we're getting pretty close. So sometimes it does roll over onto 1 million. Sometimes, it, most of the time, it's just a little bit below. And there it is. It's finished, we're done. That was the final value of the calibration for 994220 bits. So now I just need to save it to EEPROM, so I'll do that now. So that's this PDVS2 Mini calibrated. If I then use the enter button to scroll round to the 10 volts there, there we go. There's your 994220 that you saw on the PC. So now I just need to switch this unit off. The calibration's already been saved. I don't need to manually save it there. And that's this one done. So like I said, it, it saves a lot of time because prior to that, you know, if I was calibrating 10 volts, I'm using the up down buttons to go one bit at a time or the left right to go 10 bits at a time. But when you're 50,000 um, bits away from your final value that you're looking for, you're pressing these a lot to get to that final value. So this has saved me a lot of time. It takes typically between five and ten minutes to calibrate uh, one of these on the, this new system using the PC, whereas before it could easily take me 20 minutes to run through all the 11 set points. So it's a big game changer. So there we go. I've got a small batch here that are almost ready to ship. I'm just actually waiting on um, a one small heat sink that can go inside the uh, units there and uh, there will be the cover will go on. I'll check the final calibration and uh, then remove the batteries and then they're ready to ship. Thanks for watching.